Let's make a wagon. TCP wagon template. I want to get somewhat prepared for a new career. And we have this thing, the Omanigo. This is my lovely off-road vehicle. Needs a bit of tweaking, but it's nearly there. This truck is essentially 13, 15 blocks wide. So 13 is the max you would want to go for a train. And I'm thinking if I do a career mode, a new career based around trains, I'm still going to need some kind of land vehicle to get people, you know, from one place back to the train and then from the train to the hospital or wherever they're going. This thing would be my overland two train transporter and then I would need a boat that could be deployed from a train as well. The boat's pretty easy because I can just use a rib or some variant of a rib I already have. The wagon that I don't have is one that can carry a land vehicle. So we've seen a couple of different designs of like how to load a land vehicle onto a train wagon. The design that I like the most has sort of two wheels and then the deck comes along and it drops down. It doesn't need to drop down too much. It's basically, it's very similar actually to the wagon that I was planning to use, the mining vehicle, to move that around. Which I mean that could still work, but that thing really only works with a tank or something that can turn on the spot. I'm basically copying a wagon that I saw. Smeen from TCP built something like this. So I need my own version basically. So let's say, like how long is this? Because really the Mongo is the only vehicle I want this to work with. But if I just make it some random length and then try and figure it out, it's 25 in that direction. So then if it were 25 in this direction, that's the main deck. And then the Mongo, so it only just fits. 25 in both directions is quite a lot, eh? But that would mean that a wider range of vehicles would be able to fit on it. The other thing is that if I cut back in here like 11, so just mark out some spots, then you would need ramps anyway to be able to pivot it down. So these are 11 long ramps. 11 long with a wedge on the end. It actually seems a lot shorter now. What if it were... Oh, I know. What if this pivot, this bit here pivots as well? Or... So it'd be good to get an upside down 1x4 across here. Like permanently in place. And that way it would act as a stop for the ramp to come up into. And it would mean that rotating it while it's flat is probably possible. Uh, if it's a ramp then I guess it makes it a bit easier as well anyway. Because as it pokes out the ramp will go up. I'll take this piece here just with the pivot. Paste that in there. Merge, merge it and cut it. So cut this piece and then have it start facing up, which then means I can grab all of it, drop it down. Then I need some kind of frame along the bottom. I think this goes the whole way. And then merge that to there. And then that's now the red grid, the main grid. Oh, uh, wait, that's wrong. I'll just put some levers on. I can show you what's going to happen here. That connects to that. That connects to that. And this connects to this. So it would be quite low. But then this piece here on spawn. On spawn will fold down. So it might not even need to pivot up at all once it's down. Oh yeah, that piece there will be locked so it can't go up, it can only go down. And then this one, this is the problem. It's getting a bit jammed under there, so as it turns, you would really need this one to come up. Ooh. So it turns off to the side only a little bit. It doesn't need to go fully sideways, it just needs to be able to clear that. And then the ramp folds down. Does that make sense? This makes sense, eh? 
The other option is maybe flip this wedge up the other way. And then start this one down like this and then get rid of this gap where it needs to pass through so it's passing directly below it without interacting with anything and then just put some support pieces in here it looks a bit goofier and I can probably hide it with some XML but that means yeah it can rotate pretty easily and then Yeah, the ramp down's not too bad. Ah, uh, it's impacting over here. So you would need to, you either have to rotate out even further before you ramp down. Or this, this middle support piece just needs to get narrower or maybe not even exist. Uh, that's a fairly good height. I reckon it might even be able to totally, completely drop down one more block. I really want this to look more like it's solid so what I'll do is add just something to visually connect it all together. 24 hours later. Okay so for the logic we've got instrument panels coming in and a reset button coming in then the rotation for the whole deck and then the front and rear ramp pivots. So I'll be using my good old friend the counter. Maximum I probably don't need very high maximums. Five is probably too much as well, like 0.5. The increment will be 0 0.002. And so what's gonna happen is when you, uh, I'll do the main pivot rotation first. So this one, this one is a little bit different, but the ramps because it's max should be one and it's min should be negative one. When you press number one, it'll go one way. When you press number two, it'll go the other way. When you press the reset, because this is a uh, robotic pivot, the reset can just reset. And in the increment, I will set it to, what I should probably do is have a pretty high increment, as in like 0.1. That'll be way too fast. Let me hook this up and show you what, I, what I'm talking about with just the rotation. So it rotates fine right now, but when I hit reset, it's really quick. So I can either have it count down or up. That might be a way to do this. If the output is less than nothing, which in this case will be zero, then we need to count less than zero. If it's less than zero, it's a negative number, so it's probably counted down. So I think we would be counting up right that will reset it at the correct rotation speed and then we need a greater than to do the other way so if it's greater than one we're gonna rotate it this way then we also need and gates because if it's less than and the reset button has been pressed then it plugs into the gate the or gate so same with this one if if it's greater than and the reset button has been pressed that way i should be able to control the speed through the up down counter ah. so yes and then it does that so i think what i would want is probably a capacitor so the discharge, well, what do you want to do? You want to go, you want this to output equals zero. When this equals zero, if it discharges for maybe three seconds after it's been pressed, I probably need a gripper or a hard point to lock it as well. So we're rotating out through the counter. And then we press this button and it counts through a capacitor. Yeah, the input's not enough. This is where probably like a JK flip-flop. So when you press the reset button, it sets the JK flip-flop. Then the JK flip-flop triggers both these AND gates. That way it's just, it's on. It's a permanent on. 
the reset button is a press so it can just set that and then what you need is an equals when the output is zero i could use a threshold for this actually uh, the only difference is that a threshold doesn't have an epsilon so you're kind of stuck with it it'll stop exactly on zero or it'll freak out and epsilon gives you some breathing room so let's say I rotate it out press reset oh reset goes to Mm. what's happening is it's not reaching zero i can find the pivot in here and see this it's like it's never reaching perfectly zero and so that threshold is it's not able to fully reset the jk flip-flop whereas if i use an equals if the output equals zero being nothing connected and then i just mess around with this epsilon that's it's kind of like saying if it's sort of close enough to zero then then do the thing which in this case is resetting the counters from moving or resetting the JK flip-flop so that it doesn't keep trying to reset. Yeah, see that's pretty good. So it's within that like 0 0.00001 or whatever it was. It was trying to, it was freaking out on a little bit. Now it's, the, the epsilon on the equals has basically said that's close enough. Close enough to count. I feel like the middle section should be longer and the ramps should be shorter gonna shorten the ramps a little bit but extend the deck i'm gonna use friction pads down here and rockets to build that frame on the bottom so there's gonna be a slightly bigger piece on the bottom okay now i need to do the logic for the ramps ramps the ramps are just robotic pivots as well so I could just copy this whole thing if this was one ramp I think I've got one two then this is probably three and four for the up and down the up and down counter we probably need a zero min and a 0.5 max then the reset button also connects into this JK flip-flop for them and then I just need this again and change the channels so it's one two three four five and six now i probably need thinking about it right you need both ramps to be up near zero so you need both of these meaning an and gate to reasonably equal zero before you need this and this before this JK flip-flop on the pivoting rotation reset begins. So you need this and this and probably this. If I get one of these bigger functions, we can do X and Y and Z. So that would mean the two ramp values must sort of equal zero and the reset button must be pressed. Uh, actually we'll go that has been pressed which means this flip-flop has begun so for the output of the flip-flop to interact with these two ands the other two values must equal zero first so essentially it's like putting another bit of an or gate in front of the jk flip-flop i think that's it for the logic should be able to rotate both directions I've just got it rotating under that for now. I probably need to allocate or set a min and a max, but it doesn't seem like it needs to go too far, just enough to clear this corner, I think. Then front ramp, front, rear, oh, it's a bit backwards. Okay, let's get a Mongo. I try some other vehicles as well. I tried recording building this, but it's not that interesting. <laughs> it's like a lot of moving the engine around a little bit.
Yeah, that's pretty easy. And then I'll need some kind of system for locking that into place. So now if I hit reset, this ramp has to come up and equal zero, and then the rotating pivot can equal zero. And if I put some grippers in there to stop it and lock it in position, it should stay exactly where it's supposed to. Does it need to be that long? I can definitely make this shorter. I wonder, wonder what else I've got. Like, what else would I be using? Mm, the real problem is the width of the vehicles. Because we don't want to make the train wagon too wide, otherwise we'll hit stuff. It'll hit all the lights and sticks and signs and everything that are around the track. <laughs> Even this thing's having problems. See, so more normal vehicles, okay. It's a pretty good idea though, isn't it? Like, because let's say I want to take this with me, but I don't always want to use it. There is the potential to load vehicles up onto these other platforms. Although this one's maybe a bit long. I think I should make the middle section smaller and the end sections longer. If the middle were maybe 11 shorter, five on each six, yeah, five on each side. What if I make this wheel segment a three segment? I want to make it longer on top, so either I add another bogey, another truck, or I just make it longer, a longer truck. Uh, yeah, it's basically the same. It's just that the pivot needs to stick up into the deck because there's nowhere for it to hide down below. And I'll need to grab the middle segments. So by extending the wheel out here, but giving myself another wheel, we go even further so now there's like a there's a whole new platform on both ends uh, i don't know if there's a parking brake on this but that's on the platform hit the reset maybe it'd be good to have a reset through radio Then once it's turned back to normal, drive this guy up to here. <laughs> park, park up here. <laughs> and then if I wanted to load another vehicle. Um, might have to reverse this one up. Uh-oh. Look at that. Capacity for at least three vehicles. If I was doing all short vehicles, it could be four. And if it was just this one, then if I'm just transporting the Mongo, then it doesn't even need to be this long. But we also need to lock out all these buttons unless the rotation is at a certain amount. I mean, this rotation also doesn't need to be able to go all the way. Oh no, oh no. The flip-flop needs to be reset when either of those are pressed as well. So I don't think turning it completely is a good idea. Or is it? Or is it? When either of these, which are the two left and right rotation buttons, are pressed, if either one or two is pressed, then reset the JK flip-flop so I need another or because I need it to either stop on the equals or or to stop on the other button input or so now I've got to figure out how what is a good rotation like how much how much rotation is clear for the system I want to output this rotation pivot to a dial spawn vehicle Ugh. so rather than limit how far it can rotate I'm going to find the exact amount of where it's a sketchy number 
That's two six, two seven, two eight, two nine, three. Three is too much clearance, I think. So it's maybe two seven. Two eight, two seven. Yeah, two seven is good. What I want is on this panel here, I'll change this so we have rotate left an arrow at the top left, then rotate right as an arrow on the top right, then an indicator which will be rotation clear, and then rotation right clear, another indicator. So it's one, two, three, and four. So that's basically just going to light up as soon as it's clear for these other two buttons for the up and down of the ramps to start moving. The microcontroller is going to have to get quite a bit bigger. It's going to get a lot more complicated than this. The rotation is now, well, it was one and two. Then we want to have a threshold coming off here, two thresholds. And those will write back into the chain, which is, I think it'll be okay to do it like this. Right back. And then I need to connect this to there because I'm chaining through the whole system. So the threshold will be 0.27 and 0.27. And then the other one will be negative 0.27 and negative, negative 0.27. I'm writing to channel one and two Boolean, but I'm also detecting I think I'm overriding those signals, right? One, two, three, four, and then these ones need to be one, two, three, four. I need multiple of this though, that's the thing. So how many how many control areas do I need? Do I need one on each side, one at the front and the back? Uh, I just realized my Indicator lights are not going to turn on unless I'm exactly at what those thresholds were. So they need to be between 0.27 and 1, and between negative 0.27 and negative 1. So we should see. Yeah, because if you're doing it from here, you can't see where the rotation is good. But once you get to here, that's when you know you can start putting these ramps up and down. And I guess, yeah. Hmm. It'd be good if you could stand somewhere where you can see the ramp to be putting it down. What if the instruments were just in the ramp? Because then you have to be right here to push it down. You'd have to be up above it though, or on it. And here would be the best place really, and just duplicate the system over and over again. Blech. I'm going to do that. It's not the best because it means I've got to have a huge amount of channels, but it makes it super easy to get the right positioning. I'm not going to rotate and mirror it because that way it will always look the same. So from here we'll need to go instead of this back into the microcontroller, needs to come all the way to the end, plug into there and then we just loop around. And then that goes back into the microcontroller. So left and right is going to be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Am I going to run out of channels? So one, two, three, four. And then what I'm doing for the indicators, they are nine and 10. So I went four, five, six, nine, 10, seven, eight, nine, 10. And here what changes is we now have channels one, three, five and seven channels two four six and eight and they go into one of these functions boolean function x or y or z or w so using that pipe is the operator for or in this case and then instead of it down here in this OR, these two composite reads in here. This goes into all of these. And then the top one goes into wherever this channel one is going into. See, it's also coming in over here. So I will need to 
redirect it to there and then this one will go into this ore and this ore and get rid of those two and <laughs> I'm gonna have to do the same thing with the two bottom ones there all right and these two up here needs to start at channel nine so it's nine and ten then I've got four so it's from 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I've got to go up to channel 26. So I'll just do all the front ramps first and then all the rear ramps, I think. So this will be front ramp up will be 11 and front ramp down will be 12. That way I know it's even and odd numbers, right? So then I go 13 and 14. Doing all of this in Lua would be a lot better, I think, because this is going to introduce quite a bit of lag. Well, not lag, but delay. As it has to go through each one of these components, it adds a tick of delay and you start to notice it when you chain things together too much. So that's all the ramp ups done they went up to 18 or it was all the front ramps i mean and then all the rear ramps will be from 19 onwards so 19 20 this goes to there and this goes to there get rid of those and then the next thing to worry about is this reset button because i no longer have one reset button I have four reset buttons, X or Y or Z or W. Goes into there, into there, into there. I think I could chain those buttons together outside of Logic because they're push buttons and they have a, an external output. I think that is it. And then maybe I should just provision an antenna on here somewhere. I'll put an antenna on somewhere and then run the comp signal into this thing here. So I'll actually use this bigger one for reset. And it'll be X or Y or Z or A. And A will be the radio signal. That way I can reset it without having to go looking. So I will need a comp in, which should be radio data. Then I'll also need to know receive mode I think is default so I just need to know the frequency so we reset radio frequency we're just looking for an on signal coming across channel 1 on frequency 550 551 I like 551 now at least try and organize this a little bit better than how it currently is a good trick for cleaning things up when you know that you've done it is if you put all of your signals directly below each other so in this case what I'll do is and I want to get rid of all these purple lines that's what I'm trying to do right now I'm gonna take them all and stack them all vertically yeah that's a bit cleaner eh? it's a bit more easy to understand than with all the purple lines going all over the show so now to see if everything works. Lights come on and we can keep rotating if, if we really had to. Ramp up is wrong. Ramp down is wrong. Uh, I think I just need to connect the outputs back the other way or these Boolean functions here, instead of going into the top or for the up and down counter. Um, I should probably just flip it here. I flip it here. Mm, it's basically all these channels are wrong. So I think I go like this and like that. And then it was wrong for both ramps. So like that. It is rotating left, isn't it? Rotate left. Goes green. That's down. That's up. That's down, that's up, that's reset. Very good, very good, very good. 
Then what I need is like a lockout system, some kind of way to stop you from being able to send data into those ramps until the thresholds are met. Mm, and I already have the thresholds up here. So I'm gonna check for either of those two thresholds being met. Then the seat panel is going to come into that and I'm going to put it up over here so that the line stays here and I'm gonna overwrite all of these. So you should see this one switch box now controls everything down below here, which actually might look quite good if I do this. So basically the ramps won't be detecting any kind of up and down input unless they are beyond the threshold of where they can actually go up and down. What I'm going to do is have a gripper like that with a track on the ramp. So then I can lock the ramps in place. So we need a front and a rear ramp release. They can just come up here where the thresholds are. So um, once the threshold has been met, then the ramp releases release and then I need one for rotating as well which is a little bit trickier if I get rid of this very end piece then I can put a track in the end which might be good like that probably actually be better this way this is to stop it from pivoting out while in motion. I get rid of that, I can kind of plug this up. Then I need one more output, which is rotation lock. This one goes on, is there an equals coming off this? If this equals zero, what I want is if this does not equal zero, if this here does not equal zero, then release those locks because the counter is the counter i need to connect it to the counter not the uh, no yeah 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 because the counter can count up and down regardless of if the pivot is even moving or connected or anything so as soon as i start seeing a signal to rotate in any direction it's going to say oh you don't equal zero anymore so release the locks and then that will let it freely spin but when I hit the reset button, um, it will lock itself back into place because the epsilon is equaling zero. So I just want to see, is that going to look any good? With these bits. Oh yeah, will it also clip? Huh, it didn't. Ah. So can I drive up that now that this is a 13 wide base? So an 11 wide truck would be fine. Mongo is not 11 wide. Is this going to work? Eh, eh, it's not bad. Parking brake, parking brake. Hit the reset button. It shouldn't grab that one. It should grab when it gets all the way in be fine if we inspect this tooltip release false so that's good means it's all locked up and from here we can drive this vehicle up and get stuck because it's too low yeah i do quite like that this is now fully squared off because it hides this what i'll do with this piece up here then is flip it the other way like that so i need to get two more grippers and tracks down here there you go a really long ramp transport trailer thing now i just need to decorate it i think i think it would be a good idea to put hey wait a minute what's that 
I think it'd be a good idea to put tracks through here, through the middle, because then I would be able to put containers on it. Uh, tracks also look pretty neat. While that's heating up, we'll come and inspect the gate. I've done a bit of painting. Some of it's maybe not painted fully yet, but we should be able to rotate. And it's green, so now we can go down. Oh, ooh. ooh. It's not releasing. The front one's releasing, but not the back one. Uh, I don't think my brakes are connected. So it's gonna slide away. Someone posted a, a pie chart and it's like 75% of the time spent on building Stormworks things is just fixing one stupid thing that doesn't work. That's how I feel about this. That's how I feel about everything actually. Everything in Stormworks is like that. This is looking really good though, hey, with all the tracks. I really like the tracks. Yes, that's very nice. I've got winches in here. I used the medium winch because I do not want to listen to the small winch ever again. I hope it goes away. Mm. Alright, I've got no handbrake on the Mongo, so it'll fall off. It'll be interesting, like, if it doesn't fall off, that'd be really nice, but rolling already, so, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, it's already gone. <laughs> it does look very good. I think I need to put some door frames in the deck. And like this, it's just all silly logic stuff I need to connect now, like getting all the winches connected and connecting TCP because I actually didn't connect anything. As long as it doesn't break, like I don't want the wheels twisting into any of the body. So taking it very quick around some of these sharp corners will very quickly reveal where things are not working. So yeah, all that's left to do for this is to clean up the logic and actually connect some logic. Just boring stuff. I'll do it later because it's boring and I don't want to do it. Let me know what other train related stuff like specialty wagons and things you'd like to see me build because I want to have a small collection available when TCP releases. It's like I just want to have a whole bunch of stuff that you can just subscribe to and so you can immediately start playing with TCP and seeing how it works. See ya. Thanks for watching. Bye.